Hello. This video is going to document how I installed a Digitrack Soundbug sound system into a Concord North Shoreline trolley. The first thing you need to do is pull the engine section away from the rest of the cars and then remove the shell from the chassis. Removing the shell from the chassis can be a little tricky, uh, but there are good instructions in the included documentation that comes with the train, and I would recommend following those to a T, and you should have some decent success getting the shell off. Uh, using the toothpicks is definitely a good idea, and the shell will come off with a little time and patience. The decoder I chose to use was the Digitrax DH165AO. This is a universal decoder with good motor drive, uh, plenty of function outputs if you need them, and it's also Soundbug compatible. It just has the Soundbug jump right onto the board. This Digitrax decoder is built for Atlas locomotives primarily and has quick connects on the side that have little plugs that go on them to hold the wires. I didn't want to use them, but what I like about this decoder is it's really, really flat and thin. So what I did was I hardwired the wires onto the pads. You can look up in the decoder manuals where the wires go, and you need a blank 8-pin NMRA male socket that has the availability to wire solder wires into the back end of it so that you can build your own custom socket like I did here. Okay, if you put your decoder on top of the engine you should have something that looks like this. You can see the decoder plugged into the 8 pin socket. I would give the engine a test run in this situation just to make sure that your decoder installation is good and you don't have to worry about the sound part yet. Uh, you, I would advise putting the next car on because there's only two wheel pickup or well four wheel pickup but uh, one truck pickup right now with only the back wheels picking up power so I would add another car for reliability. Once you get your successful test run going go ahead and remove that decoder. The next thing we're going to do is install the speaker. Concord's circuit board on the ceiling of the car has two contact points for the speaker system. I recommend using them and we're, what we're going to do is we have to replace the speaker that comes with the sound bug because it's too big with a smaller speaker. The one I use is from uh, ESU Loc Sound. It's a 1 8 inch small oval speaker and they also make a custom enclosure for it which I would also recommend using. The speaker does not come pre-wired so you're going to have to figure out which is plus and minus on the speaker and once you do that wire two short leads maybe an inch and a half long and uh, go ahead and seal them into the enclosure or put the speaker together with the wires hanging out and seal the speaker to the enclosure and then connect those two wire leads up to the plus and the minus. If you make your leads long enough and you can get the plus and minus reversed you can go ahead and just switch them on the circuit board. The next part of the installation is going to be a place to put the capacitor. Uh, it didn't fit in the bathroom itself, which is what I wanted to do, so I ended up drilling a hole through the bathroom wall to support it uh, elevated horizontally in the car. This actually works out really nice. The wire leads are just perfect length when uh, the decoder is installed, and I ended up having to drill a pilot hole and then I think it was a 3 8 inch drill hole. Uh, I would start small and work your way up to make sure that that becomes a nice tight fit for the capacitor. Once it's installed, it'll look like this from above and I ended up painting the ends of it black because they are shiny silver out of the box and they need to be blackened out just so they disappear a little bit more through the windows. You may have noticed in the pictures that my Soundbug module doesn't have any speaker attached to it. Concord put two little female quick connect points on their board that directly connect to the speaker connecting points. So what I did was I mounted two little brass uh, quick connect male plugs to the end of the speaker leads. Again, when I talked about that plus minus issue with the speaker, if you didn't reverse it on the speaker side, you could also reverse the wires on the sound bug side and get the uh, polarity correct. But you can see these little plugs here. Uh, I've picked them up a long time ago. I don't know where, but if you don't have any, I would recommend getting a good handful of them. They're great for quick connecting any little um, wire that you want to be detachable on your DCC installations in the future, especially if you're putting wires up to a, um, a shell that like with lights. Of course if you don't feel like putting quick connects on you can always just double up the wires on the speaker connector points. Um, it's gonna work, it just gonna makes it a little less easier to service it if you ever had to take it apart again. Okay now it's time to install the sound bug module onto your actual DCC decoder. Now that we got all the prep work done the decoder orientation varies between uh, different types of Digitrax decoders, so make sure you know what orientation is 
the correct orientation for the decoder you selected. In my selection, the decoder actually hangs off the back a little bit. Uh, it almost scared me because I thought I was going to run out of space, but it turned out it worked out okay. Uh, you can see my 8-pin socket is just on the other side of the sound bug decoder. Uh, it comes with two screws. I think they're uh, 256 screws. Uh, I would recommend using them in this picture. They're not installed yet, but I did end up putting them on. Uh, just to, It cinches the plug together and makes sure that the sound bug decoder never separates from the, uh, A6, the 165 decoder. So now that we got all this done, the sound decoder is actually ready to be installed onto the unit. Okay, here's the decoder with it uh, finally installed. You can see the capacitors in the hole in the bathroom wall. You can see, kind of see the quick connect from the speaker plug wires coming down into the circuit board. And then you can see the board, of course, with the sound bug on the downside installed. Uh, here's the, you show a shot showing the low profile effect of the circuit board and the sound, uh, the DCC decoder with the little pressure being put on it. It doesn't stick up very far. Uh, it's plenty of clearance. Here's the other side of it. Again, plenty of clearance on both sides. The uh, capacitor wire I didn't have to extend. It fit to the capacitor very nicely and the speaker wires I didn't have to extend. I think I shortened them a little bit to fit that uh, circuit board point. This shot doesn't have the sound decoder installed in it at the moment, um, but I wanted to point out the yellow tape on top. I did put a protective electric tape on top of the circuit board so that when I do install it, it doesn't foul out with the trolley pole in any way. Um, so the tape's there. It's uh, electrical tape. I got it from Litchfield Station, which is now basically not doing business anymore, but uh, any black electrical tape or um, non-conductive plastic on top of that will do the job to protect that board from getting shorted. You can see here that I painted the capacitor black at this point when I realized on a test fit that I could see it through the windows where you can see where the windows would be visible in line with that wall. Uh, I also painted the stairwells black. That is a prototype to the North Shore line from what I've seen in red. So I went ahead and painted those stairwells black while I still had the shell off and went back and did that to the other uh, end unit as well. Uh, here you can see the trolley pole has been reconnected to the circuit board and it's ready to be put back together. Okay, so once you get the final car, that car together, you can assemble the rest of the train. There's 8-pin connectors between each car and you just connect those uh, wiring harnesses together and then pop their cars together with their hitch pins and they're ready to roll. train does handle 10-inch radiuses pretty well from what I've heard. I haven't run that tight of radius. Uh, what I do run is a 14 and a half inch radiuses and I have grades on those radiuses. The car, the train does not manage graded radiuses, uh, tight radiuses at all. It derails on my 14 and a half inch curves. Uh, it does handle my 14 and a half inch curves on the flat just fine. Uh, this is because of the way the quick connectors are designed, I think. It doesn't allow it to, um, to twist on while it's going around curves. So fair warning, you can't handle that kind of uh, track design. As far as sound files go, haven't found one yet for this. It's actually the North Shore Line sound file. Uh, I'm going to slowly probably build one for myself uh, using different sounds that I think just sound close or appropriate and uh, build my own using the sound loader stuff that's available from Digitracks.